Hello and welcome to another Dolphin Financial Radio Show. My name is Dan Wendell and I am the owner of Dolphin Financial Group. Today, we're going to do a podcast on personality types when it comes to money. So there was a, uh, there's a guy named Ken Honda who came up with seven personality types revolving around money. So we're going to go over them today. They're behind me and I'll go over each one and I'm going to bring my co-host, Tony Shore, who's probably going to be the eighth personality type. Um, Tony, here he is. He's sleeping. Now, Tony, when you wake up, <laughs> I want to I'm tell awake. you, the good news is I know for a fact, <laughs> listeners, Tony read the article that I sent him. It was a I CBC did. article about seven money personality types. Yeah. I've looked into this guy, Ken Honda. The, uh, I'm going to put the, uh, the link up here so everyone could see. And um, what I want to do, Tony, is I want to introduce these concepts to the listeners. But I also want, and because this is a retirement-focused podcast, I want to talk about what happens when these personality types go to retire. What do they face? Because I've seen them all. I've, I have clients that are all seven of these. Not all seven. I have clients that are each of these. Um, one at a time, sometimes two. Um, <laughs> Multiple personality disorder? Much, yes, or? yes. Yeah. <laughs> so this isn't going to be a psychological show. This is going to be a show about retirement and the money types. So you ready but, for that? Now, did you do your homework? Uh, I, I did, my, ho I did do my right. homework, but All I right. was... Uh, I have you have this article from Ken Honda. I've got an article about pizza personalities by Kevin Toyota. And I think my <laughs> Kevin Toyota article is better than your Ken Honda Toyota. I own okay. both a Honda and a Toyota. So uh, <laughs> you, you do? Know, if I had the sound effect, Tony, yes, that's the one I would do because that was terrible. And, uh, you know, I want to move. What I want to start off with, Tony, is I want to, um, I want to show the infographic that's behind me i'm going to blow sure. it up so the so the watchers the the viewers on the youtube and uh, facebook and wherever else they watch can see this but for our listeners we're going to go through each one individually one at a time and so let me just uh start by sharing my screen here so people can um uh, can people can see what i'm looking at so uh, you can see that we have the seven money personality types. And real quick, oh, yeah. we have the compulsive saver, the compulsive spender, the compulsive money maker, the indifferent to money, <laughs> the saver splurger, not naming names, Tony, the gambler, and the worrier. So these are the seven personality types that Ken Honda has come up with. By the way, go to the website, read about this guy. He's very interesting. I think he calls himself the uh, Zen millionaire. So it, it's it's quite an interesting, he's quite an interesting guy. I find it very, I find it fascinating what he does. But I want, these are the ones we're going to talk about, Tony. So okay. let's start with the, well, we'll start with the first one, compulsive saver. But in the end, I want you to tell me which one you are. Okay. But, but um We'll we'll go through each one at a time. So let's start with the compulsive saver. Now, what do you what do you know about this? Well, uh, the compulsive saver. Here are the traits uh, that they talk about. Dan um, saves money endlessly. Views money as a source of security. Uh, very frugal. Financially responsible. Uh, bargain shopping expert. Uh, fear of irrational spending. Um, kind of a penny pincher. And I think we all know people like that and yeah. uh, the compulsive saver. So I'm going to say when it comes to retirement, this is one of the most difficult retirees that I deal with. Now, be and that's because. Oh, interesting. I would think it'd be good because they save all their money right, for retirement. But, that, but saving is great, right? But once you get right. to retirement, you have to start spending it. Ah, and they're not so good at that. <laughs> no, it's completely yeah. against their nature. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. So they have a very difficult time transitioning from saving, 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 saving to spending down their assets in retirement. And even if they invest, even if they have enough money to invest and live off of dividends, they still like to take those dividends and hoard them. 
So what I find with uh, retirement planning, retirement people that are going into retirement that are the compulsive savers, they leave a lot on the table. They value the money in the bank more than the experiences. They, they forego experiences. They forego spending. I need a new car, but this car is great. And Dan, uh, you told me that buying used is great and running into the ground is great. Yes, it is. <laughs> and it does make financial sense. But at some sure. point in your life, you can upgrade that. You could do the things you want. You can um, put new grass on your lawn because you don't, you know, because um, life, is, you life do. is meant to live. Right. And right. I feel like the compulsive savers have the most difficult time out of all of these people transitioning sure. to retirement, even though, Tony, like you said, they typically have the most money to do so. Yeah. And this group in general tends to leave a lot on the table for the next generation. They're the ones that leave the inheritance. Yep. So I think, uh, you know, how do you get by that? This is my job is to transit because a lot of people save and they have an advisor that focuses on growth and saving. You need an advisor focused on spending down. And a lot of it's just discussion. Unfortunately, there's no there's no easy way out of this one, no. because I will say this. Of all of the of all seven, whatever personality type you have going into retirement, you typically keep through retirement. People don't change their personality after 60 years. Of yeah, life. that's true. That's so a good point. If you're they a compulsive don't. saver, you, it, you're going. So you, so if you're going to retire as a compulsive saver, you're going to have to make some changes, or accept the fact that you're going to retire with, you're going to pass away with a ton of money in the bank. <laughs> right. Okay, Tony. Next one is the compulsive spender. Yep. Uh, this is a little bit more, uh, <laughs> I lean a little more this direction, but it's pretty much, I would say the opposite of the compulsive saver, uh, the compulsive spender, the traits it lists here often makes unnecessary purchases, uh, spends when in emotional distress for immediate gratification. Uh, I'm raising my hand on that one. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> Look around you. Experience, yeah. Experiences buyer's remorse after big splurges. Yeah. So in, when it comes to retirement, these people, they struggle to retire, not because they don't want to live and relax and have fun. It's because they just simply don't have the money. Right. They have re limited retirement savings because they spent a lot of it. Yep. They, they did delayed gratification wasn't a good word for them. It was a four letter word. So <laughs> they spent it while they were young, which is okay because sometimes, um, sometimes these people have a forced savings account in the form of a 401k that they don't see. If you're able to get this type of person early into a, into an auto savings program through like a 401k, something like that, or a pension, then um, they have a lump sum. So the problem is when they go to retire, they get a little, you know, they, they want to spend that. So um, these people also struggle to actually retire because they need the money. So these people are the ones that are, are continuing to work in their 60s and 70s because they can't afford to right. retire. Yeah. So they live while they're young, but they continue to work. And there might be a level of resentment to the people that are doing nothing, that are lazy. Um, no, they're just retired because you spent all of it. Got it. So the hard part with this one, the compulsive spender, is that you have to try and address it early, identify it early, yeah. and save some for retirement. And then when you go into retirement, you need to make sure that preserving your income and having an actual income plan is set in place before you spend it all. So sure. this one requires some advanced thought for sure. Yeah. I have a feeling that the punchline to all of these could be have a plan <laughs> it to, is. Help, you if you to want, help you through these issues. If you want to ruin the conclusion and jump, drop right and, you know, pull the curtain <laughs> back, Tony, go ahead. I mean, do, you uh, want to, do, we, do we continue? Do we want to continue? I mean, the doctor <laughs> is in. <laughs> All right. I'm All right. sorry about that. Dan. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I think we're going to have to start going live so that we have some <laughs> audience that reins you in here, Tony. Yeah. Um, but you think you're a compulsive spender, huh? All right. Let's 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 go to the next one here. Well, I have uh, behind me are 10,000 CDs and about 3,000 vinyl records, Dan. Literally. So, 
Those numbers, Literally. for the listeners, those are not exaggerated numbers. No, I've been collecting. I've been a record collector, though, since I've been in junior high. So, I mean, there's there's that. The good news but, is, is those CDs will help you retire. Yeah, they could. Yes. Yeah. Some of them are worth some money. Uh, but not happening. Not happening. No. <laughs> Digital most music of them, shot your. The, yeah. Most. You know, yeah, exactly. Pandora Digital Hall music ruined Spotify my retirement. Destroyed. <laughs> yeah, I can just blame uh, the digital music revolution and downloading on on my <laughs> retirement going bye bye. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the compulsive money maker. What is this all about? Uh, the compulsive money maker. The the points there. The personality traits there. Uh, the compulsive money maker believes life is better when you earn more. Um, their top priority is growing wealth, making more money. They're constantly focused on that. They crave recognition for their financial success. And, you know, of of the three we've talked about so far, I know people in each category and I know you work with people in each category. So that's interesting to me. The compulsive moneymaker. Yeah, I do know these people. I have very vivid pictures of people in my mind that are this way. Now, when it comes to retirement, these people usually don't retire. And it's not because they don't have the money to retire because they're making money their whole life. They're always working, working. And when they, they they just don't retire because they don't want to, because like you said, they, they value money and they, they want recognition for their earning capacity. You know, why would I retire at 62? I'm making more money now than I ever did in my life. Um, If I, and I, I also see these people, I have clients that were, the compulsive money makers that do retire and then they immediately go back to work. Sometimes it's because they're married and they're like their husband's all of a sudden there and they're like, Oh, I, I married you. <laughs> That's too much time <laughs> together. So they go back to work to get away from their spouse. But a lot of times it's because they're used to working and they, they define their life by their job. So this type of person um, works even though they don't have to. And the solution here is to show them that they don't have to work for money. Their money can work for them. It's a very, very difficult transition mm-hmm. for a compulsive money maker. Yeah. But the conversations aren't about, oh, how much money we're going to have in retirement and how much money you can make and side hustles, jobs, whatever. Or, hey, if I continue to work till 70, I get more from Social Security. I get a pension. I get more from my job. What, I'm, they're going to keep paying me. Why would I leave? It's more about what, where do you value time versus money? And we've done shows on time versus money. I'll put the one up here. We talked about Peter Buffett, uh, Warren Buffett's son, oh, yeah. what he did with the money. So this is a tough one again. I mean, these are all tough, but not everyone's so focused. Like, there's not going to be hardcore compulsive money makers. There's no saving the, these pipes. There's not hardcore compulsive spenders. There's no saving them. But there are people that lean toward trend toward this way, and we yeah. know who these people are, Tony. You, I'm sure you know people that just love. Not they don't necessarily love their job. They just love the money they make as a result of their job. Oh yeah, I, I I have a couple of friends who are really just obsessed, or people I work with, and they're all about accumulation, and that's they just uh, love accumulation. And you know, well, in in retirement, the whole the, the word retirement means you're not working anymore, so they need to figure out a way to get the money coming in without actually physically doing the work, right? And that's that can be tough, but it can be done. It can be done. Passive income investments can generate income. And so it's, it, it, it happens, but yeah, this is an interesting one for sure. Well, and you know that the, these problems, uh, it, because they're so extreme, if people go to the extreme in any one of these categories or a number of them, you know, that it, it can be, there is help because you've helped people, your clients, you have clients in each of these categories. Most of us fall in more into one category than the other or a couple of them. So, yeah. And so the plan is tailored for them and it's going to be very different. Their plan is going to be different than someone that's uh, the next one indifferent to money. Let's Uh, talk about the indifferent to money characteristics, Tony. Yeah. I've got a little bit of this one, but uh, I'll uh, their traits are tends to be financially well off. I don't, that's not radio show. Co- that radio show, co- you know, radio show co-host money is not not gonna 
Uh, they rarely think about money. Uh, they're indifferent to money. Feels money should not be an influence. Uh, it should not influence their important decisions they make. So those are some of the traits of people who are indifferent to money, according to the uh, article here. So do you know anyone indifferent to money? You know what? That's a tougher one. I probably am the most indifferent to money person. I shouldn't say this on a financial show, but um, <laughs> I, I, I've changed. I, I will admit that, uh, you know, working with you and um, uh, my wife's constant pressure, the combination of the two, working with a financial professional. Uh, and my wife uh, pushing me, uh, I've gotten away from it. But I used to, growing up, I did not learn about personal finance. I did not care about money. Um, I just didn't, you know, I didn't care that much. I mean, sure, I, I was bummed when I didn't have enough money to do something. But other than that, I really didn't think about it a lot. And well, so, but as I got older, as I got older, that changed. I did change. You know, some you say people don't change after six years. Well, you know, in my, you know, I finally had to grow up and wake up in my 40s and 50s. And now having I'm, kids helps. Having, having kids, kids will, <laughs> having kids completely. It's hard to be indifferent to money and have children. I, I, I'm going to put this show up here. We did a show on how it's how rich you could be if you had children. I'll put that one up there. Don't have kids if you want to be rich. Yeah. Um, if if you don't so have children, how rich you could be. Yeah. You mentioned that your wife kind of pushed you away from this indifferent to money uh, yes. attitude. Now, what I find in retirement is usually an indifferent to money person is paired with a person that is aware of money and is focused on it. Sure. The the spouse is one is does the numbers, the other one yep. doesn't, right? Yes. And so what happens is these types of people have to cede control of their money to someone else, usually their spouse. Yep. The problem is during retirement is that when that spouse separates from you whether through divorce or death, then all of a sudden the indifferent to money people are in trouble. They get through life and, and a lot of times, yeah, they have money, so they don't have to think about it. But a lot of, sometimes they don't have a lot of money. They just had someone else thinking about it for them. Um, so they need to be hypersensitive to the fact that they are not into money. And they'll tell you that most of these people will say, yeah, my husband handled all the finance or my wife took care of all the numbers. I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants. Now that my spouse is gone, I'm lost. And they are not ashamed of it. Um, now, if you have someone that's super indifferent to money and, and thinks money's evil, that's a whole different story. Yeah. But when you go to retire, this type of person really, really needs to have someone take the reins. And if it's not their spouse, it could sometimes be their ch child or it has to be a financial planner. And so I often work with widows or widowers who lost their spouse to took care of the money and they're coming to me saying, show me the way. And so that once there's a plan in place, they're not, they're still indifferent to money. They're not focused on it because they still have someone else doing it for them. Right. Yeah. That, that right there could be the case. And uh, that's a good point. So these seven traits, it's interesting though. The indifferent to money one is, I don't know as many people. I mean, do you have clients in that category? I would say a majority of my clients are in this category. And like the I indifferent said, it, to money. Yes, because it's typically huh. a That's single person who lost their non-indifferent to money spouse. This really happens uh, a lot. Okay. Oh, okay. So yeah. So that... they come to a financial planner because they know they're lost. So that's why a lot of my clients are single women because they've lost their spouse through divorce yep. or death. And men just men typically die first. Uh, the, right. right. The, the, in just, just the way women typically outlive men. So with couples, uh, you, these, a lot of people end up single in retirement. Sometimes it is men, uh, mostly it's women. And I can, I guess I can see that like, uh, women in the relationship, maybe they didn't handle the finances. And so they That's came certainly in changing, but yeah. in the past, it's the way it's been. Sure. So in your shoes, you're the complete opposite, right? So just picking on you for a moment, you're kind of, if you're the most indifferent to money mm -hmm. um, and let's say you're, you lost your, let's, let's pretend you're 20 years older now. And then your wife 
you know, sure. divorces you and steals all your your radio money. All of a <laughs> sudden, you wouldn't you would radio be, money. You would be indifferent to money still, but you'd realize I can't be. So you would seek help. You would probably seek help, or you would just roll with the punches, which isn't a great idea. Well, yeah, we've are I've already seeked help. I mean, right. you know, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you All know right. my my late night calls. Uh, you, you know who you know who I turn to. <laughs> coast to coast. Okay, so <laughs> coast to coast. <laughs> next, the next one is called the Saver Splurger. The Saver Splurger. Mm -hmm. Tell me about this one, Tony. Yep, uh, I, I hit a I hit on a couple of these points for sure. <laughs> uh, sh uh, the saver splurger shares a combination of traits between savers and spenders. They're smart with money for a certain amount of time, but then give in to spending impulses out of nowhere. Squirrel. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but oh, a new you, new album. You cannot claim <laughs> that because radio uh, uh, record day. Is, record store day record store day is is set on the calendar so you can't say they are unexpected you know? <laughs> that's true <laughs> i do splurge on that one day uh, a year that's for sure when you record plan your vacations day. around it uh folks he does he plans his <laughs> vacations <laughs> around record day so record store day yeah you can go to record day. yep recordstoreday.com for more information no <laughs> listeners do not go do not fall victim to this. He's enabling. So the saver splurger. Now, retirement for them is a big challenge, right? And the reason right. why it's a big challenge is because um, like a spender, they need an income plan and they usually don't. Their income plan is let's just spend and then deal with it later. You know, ask for forgiveness. Yep. Um, and the problem with currently, the pensions are gone in this country for the most part. So if you're a government employee saver splurger, this you you could probably get by in retirement because you have a pension. But if you don't have a pension like most, you're going to get a lump sum 401k because you're good at saving, but you have a problem splurging. And all of a sudden you have your entire 20, 30 years of work history in a 401k. Here you go. You know, uh oh, uh oh, how many records can I buy with this? You know, I could buy the score. <laughs> I can have my record store day every day, you know? So um, this type of person is usually uh, you have to catch it right away or it's all over. You know, if you splurge on an oversized home in retirement or a car or, you know, something major, a trip around the world and you spend down your assets, which I don't mind people spending their assets. I'm a big proponent of it. But yeah, you did a whole this, show on that. Totally. Right. I, I'm a huge proponent of spending money. Yep. But if you spend it crazy in the beginning, then yeah, if you, if you spend your whole retirement savings on a Ferrari, you're right now, you know. if that's what you've been working toward, that's fine. But if it's part of the plan, but usually what happens though, Tony, for these people is the taxes and the penalties are enough to keep people in check. People don't like spending money. Oh, if I spend my 401k on that, I have to pay how much in taxes? Yeah. Exactly. Hold on. Let me think twice about it. So that's usually uh, sad to say. That's the only time I like taxes is when well, they kind of give people I, a check. I will admit that I am the type of person that needs forced savings. And taxes and penalties on retirement accounts have kept me from oh believe me the thoughts went through my mind wow i've got that much in my retirement account mm. in my 401k what if i just took this much out to cover this we could right. you know i could spend all this money now on something fun that, and the so, 59 and a half rule really helps you the 59 and it, a half it totally has helped me and <laughs> and it helps you get in the mindset you know it's not like when i turn 59 and a half then i'm like dig in because i've uh, now i realize okay there's a reason that's for retirement that's right. for retirement that's for right that's my income in retirement because i'm no longer going to be getting a paycheck from a job that's right yeah and um uh, you know when the i'm not going to go into how the fact that you're allowed to borrow from your 401k and not pay a penalty but i'm not going to get into that tony because well, you don't need to hear that All no right. but that's Speaking a mess that, Let's go to the next that. one. The next one is the gambler, Kenny <laughs> Rogers style, Tony. Talk to me about Kenny Rogers, the gambler. Uh, the gambler. Well, first of all, he has to know when to hold them. 
<laughs> and second of all, you need to know when to fold them. Okay. You know, the guy in the gambler that told him all the secrets of life, <laughs> Yeah, he died on that train. Did he not? He died on the train. He so. died on the train. So this yeah. is a sad story. The gambler, well, he, was, like, he, pa he passed it along before. It's just that he was able to pass along the wisdom before he left this uh, mortal plane. So, so we're going to pass along the wisdom of the gambler. Uh, the gambler. Retire. Yeah. The, the traits of the gambler, if you're this personality type, you share a combination of traits between spenders and money makers, and you take big risks with money. You're happy with financial wins, but deeply depressed with losses. So, yes, um, this one is not, this one is definitely not me. Um, uh, and I, I don't know, I guess I know some, I know some gamblers. I mean, th these are, these are the types that take the big risks and really go all in on, um, Bitcoin or, you know, the whole GameStop situation, or when something like that comes up, uh, they take the risk, high risk stock playing, mm -hmm. playing the stock market, trying to get a lot. And when they, when their account goes up, you hear all about it. And yes. when their accounts go down, you still hear about how they're up. <laughs> yes. They don't talk <laughs> about tell, the losses. You say, I made 20% last year. They don't tell you I'm down 30 this year. Right. So, yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. Right. Or, uh, you know, um, we did a show in Vegas, you and I. I know. That was and I can great. vouch for you that you did not gamble while we were there nope. i recall I, um, I have, nope i did not i am not a gambler at all so, like vegas or with money i'm i'm more on the medium to conservative side i'm more on the conservative side when it comes to uh and you know risk now i have clients that are gamblers um and they are retired and the problem that they wow. face and these are the guys or women that you see on the golf course retired looking at their phone <laughs> yeah checking the ticker uh, who's who's oh it's my turn to tee off hold on one second let me just oh my yeah. god did you guys see GameStop stock <laughs> you know so they're you know those types they're retired but they're still worried about their money yeah, is day. apple up or down yeah. today right because they're, they're what google doing yeah, they like they, that excitement right they like yeah. that and so these people but the problem that they face in retirement is that once you start, I mean, if you're going to gamble your whole life and ride the stock market wave, which we do, I have clients that do, sure. it's okay if you're working and contributing and you're not touching the money, you can ride it out. But once you're retired mm -hmm. and you're now taking money out of your accounts yeah, and it's going down, doing that. Yeah. all of a sudden nope. sequence risk is a factor. So I watch the show, listeners, viewers, watch that show up here on sequence risk because that's where the gamblers really can get crushed. Yeah, if sequence you retire, of returns. Mm -hmm, yep. Sequence of returns. If you retire and in the first few years the market tanks and you're invested in there and you have some bad years early, which is no fault of your own. It's just timing, right? You know, no one can time it. But if you retired in 2008 as a gambler, you're in trouble. Your retirement yeah. was in trouble. Yep. So um, they need to be aware of that. And what I often do as a little tip for my clients that are gamblers, we will take a portion of their money that they can afford to lose and just let them go with it. Hey, go yeah. gamble that. And they'll eventually come over and say, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, or look exactly. at me, look what I did. And say, great, yeah. let's take some of that profit and yeah. throw it in for the future. Well, sure. Because it's like what I do when I go to Vegas. If, if I gamble, I do enjoy the game of blackjack. I've always found that fun. So I'll take $20, maybe $40 if I'm feeling, you know, big spender 40 bucks i'll go into uh go in find a relatively inexpensive blackjack table uh and then i will uh this is what i've done when i have gambled i rarely if ever gamble but i would take a set amount and when i'm out of money i'm done and i have fun while i'm doing it so at one point i might be i might have six i started with 40 i might have 60 uh but usually i just keep playing until i'm out <laughs> exactly so yeah, well, uh, unless I win big, like like if I'm up, if I started with twenty and I have a hundred, I walk away, and I can do that. I have the discipline to. Uh, people that have gambling problems, that's the problem; they can't do that. Uh, I've walked away before. Uh, that has happened to me like once in the times I've 
tried gambling where I actually was up a lot and walked away. Uh, otherwise, you lose it all. But I had fun doing it, and I spent this amount. And that's the amount I would have spent on entertainment for the evening, you know, going to the theater, buying popcorn. So I look at it as entertainment, and I have to keep it like that, and that way you don't have a problem, at least me. But for some people, the risk just – they love they love the risk. Right. And, you know, it's a it's a tough battle, especially when you're retired because yeah. you got to keep, you know, you're spending sure. your, your inherit your, your savings. Yep. So let's go to the final one, Tony, the final of the seven. Now, we're, just as a reminder, we are talking, I'll put it back up. We are talking about the seven per money personal personality types by Ken Honda. Go to the website, KenHonda.com for more on this. But he came up with seven personality types and we're talking about how they impact people retiring. This one, Tony, is my personal favorite because it is the most like myself. So tell us about the warrior. <laughs> I'm glad to hear you admit it, Dan. Uh, you are <laughs> you are a warrior. Yeah, you, Dan, you fall into this category. My wife does as well. Um, uh, and a lot of people do, uh, the worrier, the traits here, I'll list them off for us, uh, constantly worried about losing money, right? Lacks confidence and ability to ch achieve financial freedom. Uh, that one, you know, some people have uh, more or less of that one, but always in preparation mode, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, doomsday preppers. Yeah. Doomsday preppers. My yep. mom was like this. My mom was a warrior. Always, you know, always. Yep. Um, mine too. Mine too. My mom was as well. Yeah. She had four boys, so she had a lot to worry about. <laughs> she did. But... And I've met and I've met those boys. She your poor mother. Just can I say that? <laughs> but and you I'm know not what? and I'm not gonna name names, Ed Wendell, but your poor mom. <laughs> Seriously. That's what that's how she started. God rest children. her soul. <laughs> so um <laughs> So my mom worried and a lot of my clients worry and they worry about money, but my mom worried about everything. Right. But she didn't have to worry about money too much because she didn't have it. Um, and my dad had a pension and she had a pension. So they didn't have to really think too hard about money. She was more worried about other stuff in life, you know. Oh my God, my four boys are actually going to be flying in a different plane at the same, on the same week. That could, that's tragedy, you know, like, but I'm talking when it comes to money worries, um, it can paralyze people. Fear sells. So you'll see a lot of fear on the, the money shows, CNBC, Fox business, you know, the fear is a headline, you know, oh, the market's going to tank. And, and, um, the, the problem is, this is not something that can easily be overcome. And so the, the goal for when you're retiring is not to just stop worrying because you can't. Right. It's to set up your retirement plan so that you have things in place that alleviate some of the worry. So as an example, let's say you had $100,000 and if you put 60000 of it away under the pillow, that's enough for you. Your plan is all set. That other 40, you can gamble. The warrior is not going to do it. They're going to be scared of the market going yep. down. So they're going to still say, I want all of it under the pillow, right? Yeah. So, and so what they lose in retirement is the upside, the longevity. They get eaten by inflation because they're always worried about that crash. Yep. When I try and switch the worry, let's not worry about the crash. Let's worry about inflation. Oh, that's something new to worry about. Let me tell me more, <laughs> you know? So I changed with these people and I think uh, just planning was hugely helpful uh, and talking, talking about these things yeah. is helpful. People, and when they share with me, I worry about it and I say, me too. Then they say, oh, all right, this, this is good. You know? So <laughs> the worrier, Tony. So that's yeah. me. Um, yeah. I want to conclude. We, we, we know what you are. You're the splurger. Save or splurger. Uh, I'm the yeah, warrior. save or splurger. You're right. You you kind of got me. I mean, I have, I have uh, maybe a trait from the compulsive spender, and then, but more of the saver splurger. It's kind of, it's kind of like the personality types. Are you introvert, extrovert? It depends on the situation. So people yes, kind of exactly. go between all of these. Um, but the bottom line is, oh, I got the wrong conclusion here. Oops. Sorry about that. That was the last show we talked about. Remember the last <laughs> show? Yeah, my kid with the, the back scratcher. So the yeah. conclusion here is the that alligator. it's important to have a plan. 
you know, the regardless of your type, knowing what type you are is really the value. If you know which of these you are, communicate that to your spouse, communicate that to yourself, and then communicate that to your financial planner, because then the plan can be customized to combat your weakness. And it's not necessarily weak. It's just a personality trait. It's just how you are. So if you're a gambler as a financial planner, I'm going to be aware of that and making sure that the plans don't allow you to gamble it away. If you're a worrier and you're constantly in fear, I'm going to worry, make sure the plans are rock solid so that you can eliminate some of that fear and you can live life. The goal of all retirement is to have fun, live life, spend your money and not worry or not be so stressed out, reduce your stress. And all of these different types have different types of stress. So the goal, figure it out, know it, share it with your financial planner, and then create a plan that actually works for you. Well, that's that's great advice. And it is interesting because I'm sure all our listeners are like, oh, yeah, that's me or oh, yeah, that's me. So uh, this has been a fun one. I always like uh, I always like figuring out the personality traits, but th those are just more for fun or the psychological aspect. This is really important because it's your finance. It's your retirement that's in the balance. Right. That's right. It, and don't. What, don't look at the show and say, oh, my God, I am the compulsive spender. I'm hopeless. Say, right. I'm the compulsive spender. Embrace it and yep. share that and get the, get the right help you need Yeah, and, and get the, the right plan you need. Yeah. The best thing to do is be honest about which one you are with a financial services professional and right. get a plan in place. Because that's what I've found has helped me is that plan and working with a financial services professional. Or right. in your case, what really helped you was marrying someone that's the complete opposite of you to balance you out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan! Tony. Good show. Dan! I'm going to bring in the outro and have a good day, everyone. <laughs> and if you want to talk about your personality, give me a call. Be happy to help. Go to dolphinfinancialgroup.com. All matters discussed in today's show are for informational purposes only. This show is not an investment advice. Dan Whittle nor Dolphin Financial Group are affiliated or endorsed by any government agency. Investment advisory services are offered through Dolphin Wealth Management Inc., a registered investment advisor in the state of Florida. Insurance products and services are offered through Dolphin Insurance Inc. Dolphin Wealth Management Inc. and Dolphin Insurance Inc. are affiliated companies doing businesses as Dolphin Financial Group. You should talk to someone at Dolphin Financial Group before implementing any of these strategies or ideas.